You know security is hard, so let's assume We're probably gonna get pwned by noon But if we all start to get the basics right We might not fully get pwned until Well, hey, everybody. Brian Johnson here from the 7-Minute Security Podcast. Thanks so much for joining us on part four of attacking or pen testing the OWASP juice shop. There's a lot to get to today, so I'm just going to hop right into it. Now, last we had left our heroes, uh, which is us, SQL Map had identified a union-based attack that we might be able to use to further squeeze juicy bits out of the juice shop database. So what I started as a, as a basis is I just pasted that command right into the search box to see what the result looked like. And as you can see, we've kind of got the frame, if you will, of what looks to be a table that we could populate with legitimate data from the database. Now, just due to these, the, the, the format of these episodes and that I, I try to keep them rather brief, um, I won't go deep into union-based attacks here, but I'm going to point you to a fantastic resource I've been learning from, and that's just sqlinjection.net slash union. Now, we have two really important bits of information here that help us get a jump start on the attack. Number one, we know from the end of last episode that SQL Map has already identified the number of columns we need to have a successful attack, and that number is eight the other thing we know from our past work attacking the juice shop is that there is a table called users. So that's a great place to start because we can attempt to extract important information like usernames, passwords, email addresses, and that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to make one small tweak to our initial statement here. I'm going to ask the database to extract all this information from the users table since we know that exists. Okay, so now I can start tweaking the names of individual columns and see if I can get, you know, real juicy data to populate here instead of just nothing. So in my past experience, I've just really done trial and error to figure this out. So let's change this first null to something we'd guess would be a legitimate value like user. Okay, so that seemed to kind of break our table structure. Let's try user name, maybe. Okay, that's a no-go. How about email? Okay, that seemed to leave our structure in place, but didn't actually show us any email addresses here. See that, just still empty. So I'm gonna change this first value back to null, and I'm gonna take our second null and hit email. And boom, look at that. There we go. And I'm gonna take this next null over and try pass. Nope, that broke the world, password. Boom! Love it. L-O-V-E it dot com. I actually don't go to love dot com. I have no idea what's there. and That'll probably break your machine. And anyway, let's uh, head over to our good friend crackstation.net and let's paste in the two hashes that we don't have cracked yet. Let's see what we've got. Okay, NCC 1701 and booze. All right. All right, now we have a couple of easy ones we can knock off our scoreboard. Let's log in with our newfound credentials. So let's start with Jim at juice sh dot up. And there's his password. Oop, let me try it again. Okay, we're logged in as him. Good. Now let's log in as our second sucker, Bender at juice sh dot up. And there is another challenge within his account to uh, change his password to, where is it? Uh, there we go. Slurm for classic. So let's do that. We'll just hit the handy change password link. Bada bing, bada boom. And password changed. So we're making nice, nice progress on the scoreboard. Um, let's look at another one that, I'll be honest with you, I just found by accident. Uh, I didn't find it with burp or derb or any, you know, sort of brute force file or folder finder. But um, as far as getting access to the administration section of the store, I just found it by playing with URLs right up here. 
I just tried admin, and when that didn't work, I tried administration. And I'm going to pause here for a moment while you bow to my elite hacks or skills. But actually, while we are here, let's take a look at the scoreboard. There is one other challenge under the administrator area we need to take care of, and that is getting rid of all five-star customer feedback. Fortunately, that is as simple as clickety-clack, and there we go. Zingo, more green on the scoreboard, and that's awesome. All right, so I'm just going to call a quick timeout here, folks. I realize that we're four parts into this series and only, what, 50-ish percent done with the whole board. I think we've made good progress, but honestly, it may take four or five more episodes at this rate for me to get through everything. So what I propose is give me a little bit more time, give me maybe two weeks, and then part five of this series will take us from this point all the way through to the end. Um, it'll be like a seven-minute security super-sized episode or something like that. Um, uh, but I, I'll be honest with you, where I've left you right now is as far as I've gotten in my work at the juice shop. So I'm going to just need some time to dig into these vulnerabilities. I'll probably need to ask the developers real nice to throw me a bone here and there and uh, and then come back and, and show you everything I've learned. So um, maybe be expecting not to have an episode next week, but the week after for sure. Um, so that's it. That's all I've got for you uh, today. Have a blessed week, and if you need me, I'm at 7ms.us, and my the rest of my contact information will follow shortly. All right, take care, everybody. Bye-bye. You've been watching or listening to an episode of 7 Minute Security, a weekly podcast focusing on IT and information security topics, such as penetration testing, network configuration, virtualization, and career advice. For more information, visit www.7ms.us.